Babe, I don't want to worry you, um, but you really should be going to your gig. <gasps> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the show, Diane Spencer. Hello. Oh, yay. Oh, thank you so much for coming. Hello. Hello, hello. Welcome, everybody. Thank you so much for coming to my show. Uh, it's so nice to see you. Look at you. You look so glamorous. Um, <laughs> welcome. This show is called Noob. And uh, it's just basically because uh, I'm married and I'm new at it and I'm pretty terrible <laughs> at it. So I thought I'd write a show. Uh, give me a cheer if you're married. <laughs> Yay! Oh, I'm glad that you... That was nice. And you did a little dance. That was really nice. Um, I didn't realise you need to get a licence. Um, I thought it was just about love and unicorns. No, it's about paperwork. You have to go to your county council and get judged by a woman you've never met in England to see if you can marry the one you love. I would rather be judged by someone who knows me, like go to a government official who's seen me before, like someone at the sex clinic. <laughs> at least then I could get a checkup, you know, before I get my license. They're like, well done, you are roadworthy. <laughs> At least that way, someone who knows me could judge me like my NHS gynecologist. He literally knows me inside and out. <laughs> he is a lovely man, he rides a motorbike, and he has very thick wrists. <laughs> <laughs> you go in thinking you're a test tube, you come out knowing you're a casserole dish. <laughs> But apparently cyst free, I think he smashes them on his way round. <laughs> <laughs> so like many married people in this room, I am now a county council approved sausage rider. So, <laughs> lovely. Um, I'm not going to change my name. Um, obviously my name professionally is Diane Spencer is my name professionally. And I'm trying to make an online name for myself, which is very difficult when your name is already somebody else's name. <laughs> and that person is way more famous sir, than you will ever be. Princess Diana Spencer beats me in Google rankings. She beats me in YouTube searches and she doesn't even tweet or Instagram. <laughs> I don't think she's taking her fans seriously. <laughs> and like, I, I was born the year they were married, when Diana and Charles were married. That was the year I was born. And my mum knew that, and she could have blown out that candle in the wind. <laughs> and she didn't. And I, I said to my dad, if you could do it all again, what would be your best case name scenario for me? And he just went, Jeremy. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's why I can change tires and play golf. Good, good. <laughs> I mean, just having this name, it just means I won't get certain gigs, you know, like the Royal Variety performance. <laughs> <laughs> you lovely meeting the Queen. And what's your name, dear Kermit the Frog? I was <laughs> <laughs> the weird thing is, is that every time there's an anniversary of her death, like, she pops up again. And... Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, it was the 20th year anniversary in 2017, and she was on the front cover of Hello. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> I'm like, can't we celebrate the living? And they're like, oh no, but it's really sad. She died. And I'm like, I'm a comedian. I've died way more <laughs> than she ever has with an alarming regularity. <laughs> 
so mm, not changing my name. Um, I have a YouTube channel, which I think many of you know. And uh, <laughs> this is why you're here. It's wonderful. And I love having a YouTube channel because, you know, I talk to people on it and people actually come to see me. Um, and people write comments. <laughs> I, I read those comments first thing. I'll, uh, I'll put on my you know, little dressing gown, like my husband will be asleep. I'll give him a little kiss, and I'll go and sit in front of my computer, and there's a notification. There's a comment on a joke I've written about penguins. Oh, how wonderful. <laughs> and I'll read that comment, and it'll say, I bet she'd take a hot load in the face. <laughs> somewhere who's fed up of being told she's funny? <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, she's my parallel twin. We've, we, we've both worked out what we want to do with our lives. We both make our own content. We put it online. She's sucking five dicks at once. <laughs> and then somebody's just written underneath her video, <coughs> lol. <laughs> Babe, why does nobody say I could take a hot load in the face? What's wrong with these people? How many times is that comment going to appear under this show? <laughs> it's already appeared once. I'm fucked. Um, <laughs> so I'm not going to change my name. So my married name um, is Di Shepherd, which sounds like a nativity that's going to get sued. <laughs> And I want my marriage to be a success. And as we all know, the definition of a successful marriage is one that ends in death. <laughs> you get married, you die, and uh, hopefully you die right after you've been making love. You come, you go. <laughs> and I would like to do that because I want to be cryogenically frozen in place and I think it would make quite a wacky ice sculpture. <laughs> I mean, depending on the moment they capture it, it'll either look like we were having a fight or I've just sat down without looking. <laughs> <laughs> I'd quite like it if we were doing something kinky and we died in costume. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great? Like, the neighbours would be like, oh, my God, it's really sad. Mr. Shepherd is dead, and so is his nurse. <laughs> Did you know he was a fireman? Like, <laughs> Do you know what? The first time I felt married, I was actually in a costume. Uh, we had been to a Comic-Con, and so we knew that any costume was up for grabs, right? And there's a weird sexual tension in Comic-Cons. Because uh, <laughs> 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 everybody sees their thing, and they kind of, they, they want to make it work. And, uh, but the weird thing is you get pairings that don't match any kind of fan fiction anywhere. What I'm saying is I have seen Darth Vader and Pikachu... <laughs> making out around the back of a leisure centre by some bins. <laughs> and you don't know what to say in those circumstances. You don't know whether to go, oh, got to catch them all, what have you caught? Or, <laughs> you know, these are not the STDs you're looking for. Like, <laughs> you don't know. Um, so I got a costume and I thought, right, I'll surprise Kevin. So I put it on first thing in the morning and he is still asleep. And so I go up and I'm wearing my little costume and I thought, right, I have to instigate sex. So I said, <laughs> you're in trouble, right? And without opening his eyes, he just went, oh, why, babe, I've taken the bins out. <laughs> I'm married, <laughs> I really, and I was like, well, I still want sex. Um, so I continued, I went, no, you're in trouble, and the punishment is vagina. <laughs> Everywhere will sell you the costume, nowhere will sell you the script. <laughs> <laughs> and um, he went, ah, what are you? Because he loves Formula One, so I had come dressed as a car. <laughs> <laughs> Look, retrospectively, a grid girl would have been better, right? <laughs> With the lycra and the heels, I get that. But I made an effort. I had a wing and um, I had like little tires that were in armbands, I spray painted black and um, I had lights. 
And um, I was like, now he gets to fuck the car. <laughs> I can tell you something about Formula One fans. They don't want to fuck the car. <laughs> Um, the only way I could have made him happy in that outfit is if there were other women dressed as cars and we had all run round <laughs> <laughs> in a little circle together. I tried, I was like, no, ride on me, I'm a lady car, I might lower your car insurance. But <laughs> <laughs> We didn't have sex that morning, which is kind of a problem for me, not just because of the fluid buildup. <laughs> Honestly, it's like a bullfrog. It's like, <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry, sorry. Um, I'm getting a paranoia. Like, I've got this weird paranoia. Now that I've met somebody that I love, I'm worried that the universe is going to take him away. And what if he dies on a day when we've not been making love? I'll feel terrible. So I keep trying to have sex with my husband just in case that's the moment he goes. <laughs> But that's not good. That is paranoia-driven sex. Do you know what I mean? I want him to float up to heaven, but I've got this weird idea that if he's got a heavy ball sack, <laughs> it'll somehow act as a ballast. <laughs> but it means I'm trying to have sex with him in all, in all sorts of weird, awkward places. And I can't instigate sex quickly. I really can't, because I'm, I'm naturally a very cold person. <laughs> Sex always begins with me sort of touching him and him going, ha, oh, can you warm your hands up, please? Can you? <laughs> I'm like, sorry, sorry. <sighs> You're in trouble. <sighs> <laughs> it's because I don't really move much. Um, and I'm quite cold and I'm quite pale and I don't have much blood. <laughs> I am sort of very pale, but sometimes frost settles. <laughs> and do you know what? After we've like, made love, I don't fall asleep straight away because so, I'm paranoid, so I'll just lie there in the dark and I'll watch him sleep. <laughs> just lie there, cold, pale, still, <laughs> thinking, how will you die? <laughs> but he always wakes me up first thing in the morning. He's quite frisky. He wakes me up by blowing into my mouth and thumping me on the chest. <laughs> But because I've got this paranoia, I keep trying to touch him. And uh, I get uh, like fixated on his erection. For me, um, <laughs> well, you know the doomsday cock, uh, clock? The do <laughs> you know the doomsday clock, like the closer it is to midnight? That's how I feel, like annihilation is imminent. Do you know what I mean? So if I see his erection, it's sort of like one minute to midnight. I'm like, oh my God, he's gonna die. He's gonna die. Sit on, sit on, sit on, sit on, sit on. Like, there we go, quarter to half past, we're safe. <laughs> oh, okay. This is gonna take a physical toll though. Like, I hope that we live for at least 50 years together, but if I'm doing something every day, what will my face look like after 50 years of blowjobs? <laughs> I'll have a chin like an Easter Island head. <laughs> I'll be able to suck through steel. They will send me down to the bottom of the sea to stricken submarines to suck semen out. <laughs> Do you know this paranoia doesn't come the other way around? Like, I fainted and, and we hit my head and we needed to call an ambulance. Yeah. I faint at the sight of blood. Once a month I have to wear a cycling helmet to the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Kevin was, I said, that must have been awful for you to see me sort of, you know, so badly ill. I said, how did that feel? And he said, well, I'll be honest with you, babe. Uh, I was trying to work out how long it would take until the ambulance came round, because I was thinking about mounting you. <laughs> I was like, babe, I was crawling around on all fours. And he went, yeah, sexy. <laughs> I was like, babe, I was concussed. And he went, yeah, weak. <laughs> when he found out I was going to tell this story to real people, <laughs> he went, could you please change the word weak to vulnerable? <laughs> it's just a bit softer. I was like, no, motherfucker, you said we. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> it sounds like he's sexually harassing me. No, I'm always sexually harassing him. Like, uh, if he's just doing something normal, I'll like walk up to him. I'll put on a quite sturdy bra and I'll walk up to him and knock him with my boobs. Do you know what I mean? Like, if he's buttering toast, I'll be like, what are you doing? And he's like, yes, well done. You've got boobs. Well done. Um, I'll reverse into him a lot because I know he likes my backside. I'll be like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, we've got a low oven and a low fridge. So I'll call him in. I'll be like, darling, I'm going to cook. Come watch. 
<laughs> and then he'll come in and be like, why is the toaster on the floor? And I'm like, do you want crumpets or not? <laughs> um, <laughs> but what I've noticed is that because I'm sort of instigating sex when I'm not necessarily 100% in the mood, it's taking a physical toll. Like, so the other day, okay, he woke up with an erection. Yay. <laughs> but it's the one you've got to do something with because there are two types of erection. Now, the first one is the one that sort of levitates while he is still asleep, pulls him out of bed, and just leads him to the toilet. <laughs> and it's a urine sat-nav. <laughs> I love that. It's amazing. It kind of steers him around all the laundry and just... He'll wake up halfway through like, where am I going? I'm like, shh, you're going to the toilet. Trust your dick. <laughs> he woke up with the other one, the action one, the one you gef definitely got to get involved with, the one that's like a drugs dog sniffing for amphetamines. <laughs> that one, the one that's like, ah! oh, hello, oh, yes, are you wiping your nose on my leg? Hello, yes, I've missed you too. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> so you've got to do something with that one. So um, I think, right, here's my chance. So I start gathering the flowers. <laughs> <laughs> gathering the flowers. Now, straight away, we hit a problem because he's got a foreskin and we've got a duvet cover and I just rolled them into one thing. <laughs> I was like, sorry. And he was like, oh, wait, stop. <laughs> Thanks, babe. I was like, sorry. <laughs> I mean, positive point. We now know if I ever lose an arm, I can still roll socks. <laughs> So um, carried on <laughs> gathering the flowers, and uh, very quickly I got a lactic acid buildup that went all the way up my arm and into my shoulder. I was like, "Oh fuck, that really hurts. That really hurts." I thought I want to ch change arms, but I don't want to break the rhythm. It seems rude, so I sort of went, <laughs> "There we go. Look at that. Look at that." And I was like, "Good, okay." And then the lactic acid started building up in this arm, and I'm like, "Oh for fuck's sake!" So I thought I've got to change to the other one. <laughs> I was like, I must have very selfish muscles. Because when I'm doing one small repetitive motion for myself, I can go for 90 minutes pain-free. <laughs> and I know it's 90 minutes because that's when my phone dies. <laughs> <laughs> so I carry on um, gathering the flowers and it, the, the pain's really kicking in and then he shut his eyes. I am a paranoid woman. What the fuck is he thinking about? <laughs> like, I know some kind of fantasy has started, but I don't know what's showing in screen two. <laughs> and I don't want some fictitious bitch in costume and scenery I can't afford taking the credit for my repetitive strain injury. <laughs> I bet she's not turned up dressed as a fucking car. <laughs> so I'm like, open your eyes, darling, open your eyes. He's like, oh, okay. I'm like, yeah, yeah, sexy, open your eyes. But then <laughs> as the pain increases, I just want to get it done. And the actions start to change. They get a bit more aggressive. And I go from gathering the flowers to sanding the chair leg. Because I'm just, I'm just like, let's get this done. <laughs> And then, like, <laughs> the words start to change. Like, I start off all quite nice, as you do, like, do you like that? <laughs> do you like that? <laughs> God bless you, sir. Do you like that? <laughs> Feed the birds. Do you like that? That's how you start. I turn into, like, the pain, I turn into some kind of battlefield medic. I'm like, don't give up on me now, soldier! <laughs> screaming down the tiny hole. Hang on in there, kids! We're gonna get you out of that cave! <laughs> when, it, when he finally came, I had to slow down to the side like a marathon runner. I was like, ah, 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 what's my time? <laughs> that personal best. <laughs> Um, and it actually took me a moment to unfurl my fingers from the position they were in. And when I looked at my hand like that, I was like, oh my God, my granny had hands like that. <laughs> my parents said that was arthritis. <laughs> Granddad was a very chipper fellow. <laughs> I think that's what 50 years of hand jobs looks like. <laughs> now, um, I told this story in Derby, right? And the promoter said to me before the gig, he went, my crowd don't do rude, so you don't do rude. And I went, okay, I don't do rude. I do do rude. 
so I did do Rude. And um, afterwards, like, they loved Rude because they'd never had it before because he told everybody not to do it. Um, a very posh woman came up to me and she went, why didn't you please your husband with your mouth? <laughs> And you know you ha when you have to like retune your frequency to understand what I went, sorry, pardon what? She went, why didn't you please your husband with your mouth? <laughs> and I went, well, I'll tell you why. Because he's heard all my stories and it wasn't the time for poetry. <laughs> <laughs> And then another lady came up, right, I thought, I'm going to get bollocked at this gig. I thought, I'm going to get told off blatantly. And there's, um, this lady came up to me, she was like late 60s, and she had a 50-yard stare, and I thought, oh no, <laughs> this, is, this is where I get told off. And I thought, I'll just take it, it's fine. She walked up to me and she just went, I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> I've been married 40 years. Your arm goes, so you're going with your other arm, so you're going with your mouth. I was like, oh my God, Nana's got post-traumatic di <laughs> disorder. <laughs> and she said, finally, he puts it in your two pumps and a squirt and he's done. <laughs> you think, where did it go? And as she's saying this, I realize her husband is stood behind her. <laughs> and he's just holding this little pie and he went, guilty as charged. <laughs> I do love being Mrs. Shepherd. I love being a Mrs. Do you know what? It's nice having a separate identity, I think. Because I could be Diane Spencer or I could be Di Shepherd. And Di Shepherd is very different. She takes drugs. <laughs> I know it's a bit of a shocker. Um, <laughs> but the problem is, is that I can't buy drugs because I sound like this. <laughs> and I don't know anybody. So when I see people dealing drugs, like most often uh, in England, they, they seem to do it in cars. Like uh, a car will pull up and everybody will do, do their business. And I'm like, ooh, a vendor. <laughs> um, but the problem is, is that when you see them, like they know what they're doing. You know what they're doing. The whole street can smell what they're doing. But when you walk up to them and you knock on the window, you go, hello, are you selling marijuana? <laughs> they drive off. And they don't want to even talk to me. <laughs> and Kevin, Mr. Shepherd, he went, yes, but babe, it's because you say marijuana. <laughs> You sound like an undercover cop. And I was like, yes, but I can't use street slang, can I? Because that's not how I talk. Like, if I use street slang, I just sound like I'm taking the piss. I can't walk up to them and go, hello, I'm not Babylon and Ting. <laughs> um, I'm looking to score some skunk because I want to get up to some hood rat shit fam. Mm. Like, <laughs> it sounds linguistically wrong. And he's like, yes, but babe, don't offer them parking advice. <laughs> I'm like, we've got, I've got very grey areas about what's legal and what isn't. Do you know what I mean? Like, deal drugs all you like, but don't park in a disabled bay when you don't have the sticker. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody might need that access. I thought... <laughs> I thought, I'm going to make drugs come to me. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to manifest destiny. So I thought, I'll get um, <laughs> a cap. I'll get a big cap with a big cannabis leaf on it. <laughs> right? Yes. And then everybody will see my cap and they will go, well, she clearly smokes marijuana. I will go and sell some to her. Yes. <laughs> um, I bought the wrong cap and I walked around for a week with a maple. <laughs> and uh, I just had lots of chats about ice hockey and apologizing. <laughs> Stop it. Now, Mr. Shepherd can get drugs because he went to art college and I think they do a module. <laughs> he said, should we get something a bit different? And I was like, oh, okay. And he went, how do you feel about MDMA? And I was like, oh my God, it's Madonna's best album. Give me all your love, give me your love. And he was like, stop, this is why you can't buy drugs. <laughs> so he allegedly got some MDMA. And uh, let me give you... <laughs> <laughs> Let me give you my review. Um, I thought it was great to a point. Uh, I spent about 40 minutes looking at my pupils, uh, basically going, look how big my eyes are. 
And then we had some cuddles. We had some internal cuddles. <laughs> it was nice. It was mellow. We didn't go anywhere. We did not disturb anybody. Which kind of makes me confused because when I drink legal alcohol, <laughs> if it's not noisy where I am, I want it to be fucking noisy. <laughs> uh, I break out of my house. I want to set fire to things. Uh, and <laughs> I become aggressive and sexually aggressive and it's all aimed at Kevin and he doesn't know whether to put on a condom or riot gear. <laughs> and that shit's legal. Who knew? Um, side note, if you're thinking of trying MDMA, um, it tastes disgusting. <laughs> it really does. It's the most revolting tasting chemical you will ever eat, even when you put it on some camembert. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin went, what on earth are you doing? I said, darling, this is disgusting. I'm going to have it with some cheese. <laughs> and he was like, please, just put the pesto down. I was like, mm, <laughs> I can't. I'm middle class and the jar's open. <laughs> I don't think Mrs. Shepherd has her MDMA without pesto and cheese. <laughs> um, my dad, I think my dad wants to try marijuana because he's following the legalization of that drug very closely. <laughs> uh, and he's got a lot of back pain as well. And he said, I'd quite like to try some marijuana. I went, well, first of all, dad, don't call it marijuana because you sound like an undercover cop. <laughs> said, I'd quite like to try some marijuana, but I don't want to fund ISIS. <laughs> I was like, how stoned are you going to get? <laughs> if you're looking for some kind of radical group that has no hope of busting into the mainstream, throw some money Jeremy's way. <laughs> My, uh, my mum is very anti-drugs, and she said, Di, I don't want you to ever take any drugs ever. And I said, oh, okay. <laughs> well, she cares, and she's like, I just don't want you having no furniture, <laughs> living in a graffiti train car. <laughs> and I was like, oh, mummy, don't be silly. I can't afford anywhere in Shoreditch. <laughs> I think weed should be legal for the over 60s, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, alcohol. <laughs> yes, please, now. Um, alcohol is legal for the over 18s. Weed should be le legal for the over 60s because it is the perfect drug for them. It's something you can grow in your garden or allotment. <laughs> it is something you can make a little cash when the grandkids come round. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> It eases back pain, and it is something you can bake. <laughs> you know, wouldn't you love to see Mary Berry's alternative cake recipe program? <laughs> um, Mary Berry is there in this little jumper, and she's cutting out a little cannabis leaf out of green icing fondant. <laughs> and then it pans to her, and she's there with all her drugs and scales. She says, today... We're going to make something ever so special. <laughs> Crack brulee. <laughs> <laughs> My mom and dad, they've, uh, they've been married for 47 years, um, and they love each other very much, but I think they love winding each other up just a little bit more. <laughs> like, my mom will go up to my dad, and she'll go, do you love me? Oi, do you love me? It's a bit deaf. And he'll go, occasionally. <laughs> and once she went, do you know what? That boy next door has put his trampoline right next to our fence. Every time he bounces on it, he can see into our garden. What if I want a sunbathe topless? And my dad went, oh, for fuck's sake, Carol, we're eating. <laughs> <laughs> then she went, what if I want to have a pair of juicy brown breasts? <laughs> and my dad went, just put your tits on the windowsill. They'll turn like the tomatoes did. <laughs> My 
my family unit's quite small. Uh, there's my mom, my dad, my sister, me, and now Kevin. And four out of the five of us have alcohol problems, but Kevin is learning. <laughs> I don't want Kevin to learn because right now we are four alcoholics with a driver. <laughs> as soon as he learns, we're five alcoholics. I can't move anywhere. Um, Kevin is from a really big family and they all live in Bognor Regis and they are clearly part of some kind of breeding program. <laughs> Um, <laughs> he's got multiple brothers and sisters. They've all had multiple marriages. I'm even Kev's second marriage. I am wife to the revenge. <laughs> and there are um, original sequels. There are spin-off series. <laughs> it goes on. And uh, it's a dry house. They don't drink. Uh, so at Christmas, we all descend on their house and uh, nobody drinks. Uh, but they do offer me alcohol because they know if they don't, I'll start shaking. <laughs> And they, uh, they, they only have one cabinet with any alcohol in, just one. And, uh, <laughs> 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 and um, like it's got stuff that they've been given as presents during the year, so it's a bit dusty. And um, I sort of pick out something quite, you know, exotic, like a Slovakian sherry. And then um, <laughs> I have to find a chair, because as everybody knows, in a big family, there is a chair hierarchy at Christmas. Yes. Nanny and Grandad get the best chairs. Yes, followed by the dogs. <laughs> <laughs> then the originals, then the spin-offs, sequels, etc. And children don't get chairs because they bounce. Yes. <laughs> so I get my Slovakian sherry and I find like a fold-out finger trap chair and I sit on that. And then I am visited by the local children. <laughs> and they come to me um, and they bear their handicrafts, which are usually pasta necklaces. And I say, thank you, child, for your craftsmanship. Here is a fiver. Um, I mean, it's only a fiver to me, but in their currency, it means so much more. <laughs> um, so I sit there buying pasta necklaces. Yes, yes. Um, when people say to a woman, have you got any kids? What they don't mean is, are there any children in your life? Because if they meant that, I could say, oh my God, yes, I have loads. I can tell you about them. I've got my stepkids. I've got my, uh, I, th I think they're nieces and nephews. I don't know. I buy their necklaces. Um, <laughs> I've got lots of them, right? But they don't mean that. What they actually mean is, what have you, woman, made with that particular womb? <laughs> and my first response would be a lot of extra laundry. <laughs> um, <laughs> I have actually got an IUD. <laughs> like, <laughs> I've chosen not to have children, and that is my choice. Uh, but it's, it's weird, uh, because uh, when I went to have the IUD put in, like my doctor, female doctor, she was about to put in, she went, ooh, you're 37. And I went, shit. Should I get a helmet? And she went, well, if I put this in, you might not have children. And I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> You're right there, yeah. Oh, wow. Well, okay, well, I think you should go for it anyway. I <laughs> and, and she's like, well, 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 should we stop? And, I, and she was being serious, and I was like, oh, no, 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 please put it in. I like to think of it with making my sort of cervix like a, a bell with a little clangor. Do you know what I mean? Sort of <laughs> ding-a-ling-a-ling, sex without consequences, you know. <laughs> um, and we sort of, uh, she, she said, you might regret your decision. I was like, no, I, 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 I mean, <laughs> um, I'm fine, please just clangor in the bell. <laughs> when I went to my female dentist, for some reason this popped up, and she was like, oh my God, are you gonna freeze your eggs? And I was like, uh, no, I don't really <laughs> <laughs> think I want to do that. I'm quite happy with the decision that I made, but thanks for uh, giving your advice. Can we just get on with what we're doing? Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, and when I w uh, it popped up with a female hairdresser, uh, and uh, she said, um, you really should think about having children because otherwise you'll never know what it's like to truly love another human being. <laughs> I was like, do you know what? I'm just going to let it grow. <laughs> uh, but when I've told like male friends and work colleagues about my decision, I get a different response. I get high fives. <laughs> and once somebody bought me a beer. <laughs> And I was thinking about this. I was like, oh my God, uh, my 
sense of identity doesn't seem to fit in with many other people of my birth sex gender. I think I might be a transgendered man. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Kev, I think I'm a transgendered man. And he went, okay. <laughs> and he said, that means we're gay. And he went, can we do anal now? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why it comes in for so much cl cliticism. <laughs> That's a word I've invented, to clitorcise. Mm. So when one woman critiques another, yes. Although it does sound like something that you might have done in spin class. <laughs> Just came off the bike funny and cliticised myself. <laughs> 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 I, uh, <laughs> Well, I invented it when I was watching Goodfellas, you know, because they're always there going, you're breaking my balls, you're breaking my balls. And I was just like, what's the lady equivalent? Don't you cleticize me. <laughs> Another thing they did, uh, the guys there going, you're yanking my chain. And I was like, what's the lady equivalent? You're twisting my flaps. <laughs> I don't like critiquing, but I, you know, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes it's got to be done. Like, okay, this last Christmas was a Christmas that I was Mrs. Shepherd for the first time, right? And one of my brothers-in-laws was going through a little bit of a difficult patch. You know, sometimes you bring people into your world that aren't the best for you. Do you know what I mean? Basically, he bought a skank to Christmas. <laughs> And uh, sh this woman brings with her three of her seven children. <laughs> and one of my uh, nieces comes up and she goes, Auntie Di, she's got seven children like Snow White. <laughs> and I was like, there's a lot wrong with what you just said there, darling. <laughs> but running with it, yeah. Um, isn't it a shame she's not bought any of the nice dwarves? <laughs> Because she hadn't, she hadn't bought Happy, Dopey or Bashful, she'd bought Stabby, Snatchy and Cunty. <laughs> and I was like, these are the three she's willing to wheel out in public <laughs> to a room full of people that she's never met. I mean, I'm assuming that one out of the seven is gonna be okay, so I've kind of christened the rest, like Asbo, Crackhead, Prison Rape and Philip. <laughs> Um, so I make a space for her to come and sit with me because she's a sequel, so she could come in. And she just comes in, she walks straight past me and sat on Grandad's chair. <laughs> I know! Like, <laughs> even the dogs were like, oh! <gasps> like, <laughs> and everybody else is sober, so they're all talking about it. They're going, oh my God, should we, should we, uh, we should probably say something. Should we say something? Grandad's still in the kitchen, should we say something? And I'm like half cut, so I'm like, oh, fine, just leave it, it's fine. <laughs> is that chair up for grabs? Because I've put in a lot more work than she has. <laughs> um, and then I quickly realised that one of her kids is showing symptoms. Like, I used to work with children with special educational needs, so I know what certain things look like. And I said, is your boy all right? And she went, oh, which one? And I went, that one. And she went, don't even get me started. You can't recognise emotions in your face, so he doesn't know how you're feeling, right? You need to put him against like a plain wall because he finds busy situations <laughs> difficult. I was like, oh, good thing you brought him here. <laughs> uh, he doesn't like new experiences and new people. See my previous point? <laughs> and you just gotta like leave him alone to fiddle with something. So I just went, oh, so he's got autism. And she went, he's not got autism. And like everyone went quiet. And uh, the quietness was only broken by Kevin turning to his mother and going, I love what you've done with the fireplace. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, ah, oh, that means I've, I've done something. And I was like, I don't see what the problem is. Like autism, there's nothing wrong with being autistic. You are just autistic. It's just something you get. Like you're just, there's no issue there. Like I'm ginger, he's autistic, you're a slag. Like it's just, <laughs> it's what you get. But before I could like explain my theory, um, <laughs> He comes running up to her with like this metal puzzle, and this is perfect for him. Like he's like, uh, oh. and she just went ballistic. She went, oh, give it a rest, mommy's at a party. And I was like, wow, that hairdresser was correct. I will not understand love ever. <laughs> I do, I don't, I don't understand. It. So she's drinking, I'm drinking. So we gravitate together, and um, she says, God, I wish I was like you. No fucking kids. 
And I felt tense, so I thought, oh, I'll make a joke. So I went, well, of course I can't have children because I'm a transgendered man. <laughs> <laughs> And she went, oh. <laughs> yeah, I thought you had big feet. <laughs> and then she went, I've got a mesh so I don't piss myself. <laughs> I was like, oh, I thought you were using it to trap cocks like entangled dolphins. <laughs> and then she went, I hate men, men are shit. And I was like, oh, wait a minute, when you say that, you're including my husband, my dad, and half my friends. And she was like, no, men are shit. I should just be like your lot. And I was like, Ginger? <laughs> She's like, gay. I should just go fucking gay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to a gay bar, kick open the door, and go, there's my minge, lezers. Have it. <laughs> Now, I have a lot of gay friends, and I'm not sure that's how lesbians work. <laughs> They're not all like fish in a tank, just floating around gay bars. And then you suddenly plop in, and they go, I can smell minge. Can anyone else smell minge? There's minge in the tank! Like, they're not piranhas. Like, this woman has clearly, she's had seven kids, and there is no exercise regime whatsoever. There's going to be some collateral damage. What I'm saying is the first lesbian's going to fall in. <laughs> like, if you're serious about this, then you need to go into get set up a guide rope system, some kind of buddy thing. I mean, going down on this woman, it's going to be like sort of Mission Impossible trying to lick moss off a cave wall. <laughs> I was like, darling, the, <laughs> the only way a lesbian's going to be interested in your bucket is if you write KFC on the front and stuff it full of fried chicken, okay? <laughs> so um, aside from offending new relatives, um, aside from offending new relatives and taking drugs and hand jobs. Uh, <laughs> Kevin and I, we also do online gaming together. We absolutely love it. And, um, oh, it's so nice. I found my player too. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh. And, um, give me a quick cheer if any of you do any online gaming. Quick cheer. Yeah. Ah, my people, you came. Um, <laughs> um, it's so great. Uh, we play a game. Uh, one of our favorites is a game called Rust. And you wake up in a post-apocalyptic land, and you wake up on a beach naked with a rock and a stick of fire. And that's it. And um, it's really serious. <laughs> <laughs> and the first thing that I do is I run across the radioactive wasteland to find Kevin, because I'm like, now even in the apocalypse, we're going to be together. Um, but the thing is, you're supposed to collect things and craft things. And by the time I turn up, Kevin, who is much better at the game. <laughs> He's made like a bomb-proof bunker. He's got a tracksuit and an AK-47. <laughs> I'm like, you got all of that from a rock and a stick of fire. <laughs> He's like, yeah, babe, what have you got? I'm like, I have found a tin of beans. <laughs> <laughs> the problem is you can choose what you learn to craft. So his crafting list is like guns, ammo, AK-47, armored doors. My crafting list looks like the IKEA catalog. <laughs> <laughs> Just because we're in a bunker doesn't mean we can't have a lovely rug. <laughs> so I'll make like lanterns and fairy lights. You can make canvases and do paintings. It's wonderful. Um, but everybody seems to have silently agreed on something. Like there's no rules to this game. None whatsoever. You just wake up and that's it. And you do whatever you like. And somehow everybody seems to have ag agreed silently that you're winning when you have repeatedly murdered and robbed your neighbors. <laughs> Winning. No, I, I disagree. I know that I've won against the apocalypse when I managed to open a radioactive art gallery and cafe. <laughs> I invite everybody on the server. I'm like, okay, everybody, we're, we're going to open at six. We're doing an under the sea theme this month. <laughs> I get shot a lot. <laughs> um, <laughs> The weird thing is there's a lot of PvP, right, which is player versus player. So you sort of you get your gun, you run outside, and you're theoretically supposed to shoot somebody. 
That's the theory. Um, and Kevin is so good at PvP. He's fighting. He's out there like, well, hear gunfire, and he'll run outside. And um, I should never get involved uh, <laughs> because when I run outside, I, I get nervous because um, he's uh, he, he's in the middle of it, and we're like, babe, he's behind the rock. Shoot the guy behind the rock. And I'm just like, oh my god. And then I get player versus fingers. Uh, and I'll hit the wrong button and then my crafting screen will pop up and then I'll try and delete it and I can't and then he'll be like why aren't you shooting the guy and I'm like I'm sorry I appear to be making a dining room table set <laughs> <laughs> he's like kill him I'm like I can't I'm whittling a chair <laughs> Um, I, get, I, I get flustered when there's too much action. I prefer slower things. Like, I play a game uh, called Payday 2, and uh, that's great. You are bank robbers, and uh, you, you rob various places, you know. And so I, I always plan it stealthy, because you don't have to alert the police at all. And I said to Kevin, I said, right, <laughs> okay, there's the bank, darling. Now, you go up to the roof. He's like, why are you whispering? I'm like, it adds. Like, bear in mind, <laughs> we're sat next to each other in a room. So you go up to the top of the bank. Now, you take out the guard with your silencer. I will go into the bank, steal the manager's key card. We, have, we can do this stealth. No action, no police. No one needs, needs to even know. We'll just grab the stuff and leave. It'll be beautiful. And then Kevin will push the wrong button. <laughs> and drop a grenade on the roof. <laughs> he never pushes the wrong button when he's fighting people. He only pushes the wrong button when I want to go slowly. Do you know what I mean? And then, as <laughs> <laughs> and then the bomb will go off and all the police will turn up and the SWAT team will arrive and, and then he's running around <laughs> and it's all guns and noise. And then suddenly I am a married woman on holiday on an excursion I've not packed for. And he's kind of there going, come and shoot the cops! And I'm like, well, I would, but I didn't pack my heavy ballistics vest. <laughs> and I will go to the vault, and I'll sit there picking locks, and he'll go, you can't be having fun, babe. I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not, but I'm going to pick every single safety deposit box in this bank, because we came here to rob the fucking bank, and that's what I'm going to fucking do. <laughs> Because of the time we play, we know a lot of Americans, and wow, they have a slightly different culture, don't they? Don't they? <laughs> different beliefs. Like, um, we're in the middle of a firefight in Rust, right? So we've got guns and everything's going off, and then suddenly one of them turns to me. My online name is Ginger. Guess why? <laughs> and he turns to me and goes, uh, Ginger, is it true there are no dogs in the UK? <laughs> I'm like, what? And he went, uh, Chris told me there are no dogs in the UK. And Chris straightway jumped to him and went, yeah, it's true, isn't it? Isn't it, Ginger? Because of the moon. Because <laughs> the moon came too close to the Earth and it pulled it out of its orbit. And he went, oh, God, don't start with this whole round Earth thing again. <laughs> He went, yeah, the moon came too close to the Earth and it pulled it out of its orbit and the UK tilted and all the dogs slid off the <laughs> island <laughs> into the sea. Isn't that right, Ginger? So I just went, yes. <laughs> You're talking about the great slide of 1608. <laughs> this voice can't buy drugs, can sell bullshit. <laughs> the moon was at its zenith. And the gravity pulled on the tectonic plate the UK was on. And as we all know, dogs are not naturally grippy. <laughs> and they slid off the island and many of them swam in the sea for France. <laughs> and then the first guy went, went, oh my God, I've got three dogs and they slide on the floor the whole time. <laughs> and then he took his headphones off. He went AFK in the middle of a gunfight and he went, Marie! Have we got sliding insurance on the dogs? <laughs> he comes back about 10 minutes later and we hear him and he's put his, his headset on. He went, yeah, just get it for the husky. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought, I'm going to keep talking. So I went, yes, that's why we have no native dogs in the UK or blind people. <laughs> Because the blind people were holding on to their dogs at the time. 
And when their dogs went, the blind people went with them. And that's why uh, we've never forgotten it and why historically pirates have eye patches. <laughs> He didn't catch on. He didn't. <laughs> a friend of mine who doesn't do any gaming, she went, how long have you been playing that game? And I went, what, today? <laughs> Five hours? And she went, oh, my God, I think you have a problem, but I think I know someone who can help. And I was like, oh, my God, do you know someone who can get Kevin a silencer for his gun? <laughs> and she went, no, I think you have an online gaming addiction. I was like, no, I don't. I'm doing it five hours. It's just because it's gaming, I think. It gets that sort of stigma. Like, if I was... When people go on holiday, they read books by a pool for five hours. You don't walk out and go, oh, my God, look at that poolside paper junkie. <laughs> it's just stage an intervention. Like, if I was painting for five hours, people would go, oh, my God, have you seen... She's such a genius. I mean, she's really depressed. But she's <laughs> such a genius. She just paints for five hours. And I'm not going to get depressed when I'm gaming and cut an ear off, because then my headphones wouldn't fit. <laughs> I think it's just because it's new media. And what, what puzzles me as well is how parents attack it. Like, I played games when I was a child. My favorite character was Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> yes, some people mispronounce her name. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the amount of rings that bitch has got, she's a lady. Um, <laughs> she never stayed in one place. She just gathered all the jewelry and fucking ran. <laughs> <laughs> She had fantastic shoes, and a rolling hedgehog gathers no mortgages. She was a lady. Um, <laughs> but she was mine. She was mine. Um, and I love playing games because you've got so much imagination with games. I um, have a prison. Yes, I run a prison, and it's called Pepsi Max. <laughs> and uh, I do woodwork classes and uh, literacy classes. It's a great place to raise children. Like... There's so much you could do online, but people critique it. And like, I hear parents ringing up the BBC and they go, BBC, my child is addicted to Fortnite. <laughs> and I don't know what's going on. And I'm like, have you tried playing the game? <laughs> and they go, no. And I go, try playing the game. And one lady, she went, I tried it once, but I didn't like it. I said, how long did you try it for? She went, oh, about three minutes. I kept dying. I was like, yes, that's because you're a noob. But your child doesn't want to be a noob. They want to be better at it. But for some reason, I think people look down on it if a child enjoys it. But this has happened with all sorts of hobbies all throughout history. Like, Mozart wrote his first symphony when he was eight. That did not just happen. But I can imagine his mum going, oh, my God, he is addicted to that fucking harpsichord. <laughs> Every day his mates turn up here, Beethoven list. I don't know what they're talking about, major keys, minor keys. It makes no sense to me. <laughs> Have you heard the noise coming from that road? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> I'm like, boys, you spend too long indoors. Go outside, play with a stick. That's what I did when your age, yeah? First chance I get, I'm throwing that fucking harpsichord through the fucking window. <laughs> We're, um, we're nearing the end of the show, and um, what I like to do, for those of you who have seen my work, is I like to ask my mother's advice. And I thought, well, mum's been married 47 years. How can I not be so much of a noob at marriage? But then I rang up my mum, and dad answered, and they were in A&E, and uh, the emergency room. And um, I said, what happened? Now, mum is a diabetic, and she had not eaten enough sugar. And she said to my dad, they were out shopping, and she went, Des! I feel ill, I'm going to faint, catch me. And my dad, who has been married to my mum for 47 years and has seen diabetic hypos, sprang into action and he went, oh, for fuck's sake, Carol, sit on the bench and eat your jelly babies. I'll go finish the shopping. <laughs> <laughs> so he went into Sainsbury's and mum um, sat on the bench, but she didn't get enough jelly babies in time and she keeled over and she hit her head. Uh, yeah. So I said to dad, how is she? And dad said, non-responsive. <laughs> oh, so Kevin and I got in the car. We drove down to Bournemouth where they live and they were in the hospital. And we go in and it's Mr. and Mrs. Shepherd to see Mr. and Mrs. Spencer. And we walk in and there is my mum lying on the bed with two blocks either side. And I say to dad, how is she? And he says, non-responsive. And that is another two hours, so that's five hours. 
And I wish I could do what I can do in games. I wish I could put my hand out and just kind of bring her back or just anything. But I can't. I can't do any of this. So I just take her hand and I say, it's okay, Mom. I'm here. And then my mom's eyes went like this. <laughs> like she was loading. <laughs> <laughs> and she went, die? Die? Which is an unfortunate <laughs> abbreviation of my name. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, is, is this some kind of miracle? No. She was so pissed off with my dad for leaving her outside Sainsbury's. She, she decided to not speak to him for five hours. But these five hours include when he's on the phone to the ambulance people. The ambulance people are going, if she doesn't wake up, we will have to take her to the hospital. Did she wake up then? No. They're in the hospital three hours later and he's on the phone to me. Does she wake up then? No. So she tells me all of this while he's in the toilet and I'm like, okay, well, uh, I'm... <sighs> I'm kind of glad, but what? And she went, die. We've been married for 47 years. You gotta keep it interesting. <laughs> As per usual, she gets the last word in my shows. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for coming to see me. Let's all go to the bar. Uh, let's all go to the bar. My name's Diane Spencer. Thank you very much. So, hello, sir. What's your name? Chisel. Chisel? Yes. That is the best name I've ever... Is that your birth name? No. What's your actual name, or can't you say? Don't tell anyone that. Wow. It's one of my best-kept secrets. Oh, wow. Is it as bad as Kevin? It's in the ballpark, actually. But it's in the ballpark. I'm sat in front of the man. <laughs> Hi, I'm Carmen. How are you doing, Carmen? You all right? I'm great, thanks. Um, so, did you enjoy the show, Carmen? Yes. It was fucking amazing, as usual, because <laughs> Diane is hilarious. Yeah, and you've seen her before, right? Yes, lots of times. And uh, would you say it's your favourite show so far? Um, I think I liked the one more that she she did about. Okay, she had wow. Okay, we're going to stop the interview there. <laughs> this this interview's gone to shit. We are not doing it any. No, no, no. Cut, no, cut, no. no. Tony, and who are you with, Tony? Who are these people that are desperately backing away? I'm off the off the street. This is my daughter. How would you do? How do you do, Hannah? A significant other, Jack. Hannah and Jack. And where are you from, Tone? I'm from York. York? You haven't come down for this, though? Absolutely, yes. Wow. And so, what you, you, I, that's great. And you're going to come, you're going to stay for a few days, or are you going back? To come back tomorrow. I have done a bit of work as well, but, you know. We'll cut that bit. When he says he's done work, we'll just cut that bit. We'll just, he came down from York just for this. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, did you enjoy it? I did, yes, yes. And you've seen Diane before? Yeah, well, we actually, she's done two of our corporate Christmas lunches for us and um, most of the staff are in remission and having counselling now <laughs> so, so I thought I'd just come and see her just to check her out again in case we wanted to book her again for another event you're actually the risk, risk assessment officer and you've come down <laughs> it's all covered now I'm not quite sure it's passed <laughs> but you know we'll see we'll see yeah can I have a new nickname if you're chisel can I be hammer I've not heard that one before. No, I genuinely want to be called Hammer. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sure the lovely wife has got plenty of nicknames for you. Wow, uh, yes, she has. <laughs> uh, one of the. Are any of them uh, not so they're safe for public consumption? Well, they are. They're actually more embarrassing. My, uh, my, my wife calls me Biscuits. Biscuits. Yeah, which is uh, sort of because I call. she used to call me Pussycat, uh, and we thought that would be embarrassing, so we went with Biscuits. <laughs> Thanks, Chisel. Uh, <laughs> Pleasure. Yeah. Uh, I'm Bert. I'm Joyce. Joyce. And uh, where have you come from today? Uh, from Belgium. From Belgium. Yeah. Just to see the show. Yeah. Just to see the show. And obviously you're staying for a long time. Uh, <laughs> no, we arrived this afternoon. We watched the show, and tomorrow morning we go back to Belgium. No way. Yeah. And we brought yeah. chocolates. And we brought chocolates for Diane. But yeah, we did. Oh, we couldn't. 
like genuine Belgian chocolates. Genuine Belgian chocolates. I'm really looking forward to that because they will definitely be in my house when I get home, right? Uh, yeah, but I don't think you're going to get them without a fight. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've seen the show. We kind of like that. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. It's true. I like the one. She wrote a show about having to write a show for someone. Oh, I do know the show. Yeah, we can't talk about that on camera either. Oh, no, shit. No, we can't. Okay. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Do you know, what was the woman called? Yeah, it's called Power Tool. Power Tool, yes. yes. You preferred that one. Okay, so it's <laughs> really, really strong. Uh, so My name's Ben. Ben, and what, where are you from, Ben? <laughs> Straight in the camp. Yeah, <laughs> from Watford. From Watford, Ben from Watford. I like it. I'll be called that. Yeah, ben from Watford. I've had worse names. <laughs> what do you do, Ben? Um, I manage... Comedy venues. Do you manage comedy venues? Do you manage this one? Not this one. Hello, sir. What's your name? Uh, Jaakko. Jaakko. Like Ismo uh, Leikola. You know the famous comedian. Oh, you know? Wow. Yeah. Most funniest man in the world. Okay. That's oh, great. Okay. That's what good. the fuck is that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Hello. Hello, how are you? He's so from Finland. I'm from Finland. Okay. But she's from England. Yeah. yeah did you enjoy it? She is amazing. Yeah. yeah. Did she's ginger. She's very original. Yeah. <laughs> it is, it is. Yeah. So, did you enjoy the show? Yeah, it was brilliant. Um, I've not seen seen her for a couple of years. It's been a couple of years too long, I think. So, good to get some laughs in, um, and hopefully get in the habit of seeing her some more. Well, thanks, Chisel. He's got a good nickname. Thank you very much. And I've got a shit nickname. <laughs> I fix watches to Watford. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. But. How do you know that? <laughs> you don't know that. No, I'm just kidding. Cancel that. But anyhow, she's really lovely. I, I want to see her again. Surely, good. There you go. Without Kevin. Don't Kevin, without. Husband. Yeah, he sounds like an arsehole. I don't know who that guy is. Yeah. But anyhow, unless he's filming there. But he might yeah. be the guy behind the camera. I think that's Kevin, that guy there. Yeah. So but you can edit this. Whatever. Oh, yeah, we're going to chop this to pieces. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. going to be all right. Well, it's like a uh, uh, cliffhanger. Phoenix. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know this goddamn Phoenix uh, producer. You know, Renny Harling. Yeah. From Finland. Yeah. Cool. Like so, have you seen Diane before? Yes, I absolutely have. Yeah, and did you enjoy this show? Absolutely. It's one of the, um, one of the funniest I've seen Diane do and one of the funniest I've seen around. Did you enjoy the show? A lot, really, and just truly, truly incredible. Thank you very much. Well, there you go. All the way from Belgium. You did like this one, but just not as much as the rest. That's all right. Anytime you spit on you, it's fine. So I get, I get nervous. I spit. That's how it works. Um, okay. We should talk about that in the show. Okay, this interview's really gone badly now. This interview is ruined. Uh, we, that's fine. Anyway, I think Diane's great, and um, more people should watch her. Yeah, I mean... Carmen did say she couldn't believe that she wasn't famous. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Famous? Uh, yeah, yeah. How can we do that? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't work in the TV industry. If I knew that, I'd make myself famous too. <laughs> Carmen, selfish, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Did you come over specially? Yeah. No way. There you go. Look at that. Lots of international people. My friend who ran away, He's, we're both watchmakers, so... I like her timing and the talk. It's really good. Top notch. Look, this is a, this, this is a serious thing. So, no, I want, I want, <laughs> give me. I want to know where you are from. And I want to know because I'm making a list and that way I can come to your town. So my email is spencer underscore de at hotmail.com. Okay, I'll write it down on a thing. You email me and in the subject line put your city and your country because I'm making a list and when I've got enough people in each place I can do a little tour so I can come to you. Mm, thank you. <laughs>